Hello again. Um, probably hasn't been too long. <laughs> uh, depends on how fast I upload things. Today I've got this big old GPS. I have two of these actually. I got them on eBay for another project that never really happened. Uh, they turned out to be way too slow for what I wanted. They only sample at about one sample every two seconds. And their chipset's old enough that it takes a good two minutes for them to get a fix. But they were weatherproof. It's got a nice rubber seal around the edge here. They're a typical serial GPS that pulls power off a PS2 port just about what you'd expect to find in any old GPS system. I figured it'd make for an interesting teardown. So let's uh, get into it and see what we can find. So Two RF shielded cans connected by a piece of coaxial cable. This is obviously our antenna. This is obviously our electronics. Uh, looks like we're using an MMCX connector here, so we should just be able to pop that right off. And oh no, not MMCX, just MCX. It's a little MCX connector there, which could actually make this useful. Oh, that's lovely. You just bodged in there with some hot glue. Now we'll get back to that in a minute. Down here we've got the serial cable coming in on a nice little strain relief. And the rest of it's held down with some more screws. Looks like the uh, can wraps all the way around. Uh, but it is not soldered. So I should be able to just get in there with a screwdriver and pop it apart. There we go. Ah, we're in. As Dave would say, we're in like Flint. Never did understand that one. Must be an Australian thing. It looks like we got a little button cell battery here under a piece of huh, vinyl electrical tape. Pull that up and see. It looks like a standard CR123 lithium. Uh, CR, oh, sorry, 2031. CR 2031 lithium battery, 2032, that is literally soldered to the board. Whoever decided to do that needs to be shot. Easily detachable daughter card here. Oh my. Look at that nasty soldering job. I mean, I'm no. I'm no expert at soldering wires, for sure, but that, that is very special. And uh, that's an interesting way of fixing the trace, just get in there with looks like they got in there with a Dremel tool and just ground the trace away to isolate the two grounds. Interesting. So we've got another Maxim chip here. Say Max 3221. That is an RS-232 driver chip there. Look at the uh, date code on this, 1998. Wow, that's... These are a little older than I was led to believe, and that goes with the date code on this chip here, 
22nd week of 98. Okay, I was led to believe these were a little bit newer than they were. Let's get these stickers off them. Possibly this RF can too. No surprises here. This large semiconductor here is a Rockwell branded. Alright, let's see if we can get inform any information on this Rockwell chip here. No, no information on it. If anyone has any idea about that, it's probably a custom system on chip. Uh, used specifically for GPS's. So we got two chips I S six two C two fifty six uh thirty two K times eight low power CMOS static RAM. And this is probably the prom given that it has a label on it. Yep, that is definitely our EEPROM. So we've got two bits of RAM and an EEPROM on this side. A Dallas semiconductor and another Amtel chip down here. Let's see, an Amtel 738 and Dallas 1302Z. Real time clock counts seconds, minutes, hours, date of the month, month, day of the week, and year with leap year compensation valid to year 2100. 31 times 8 bits of RAM for scratch pad data storage and serial I.O. Operates from 2.0 to 5.5 volts and uses less than 300 nanoamps at 2 volts. So that's a real-time clock. Real-time clock chip. So what's this Amtel chip here? This Okay, that's another EEPROM. It's a two-wire serial EEPROM. I'd be willing to bet that the bootloader is on this and then the main software is on that. Got a place for a gigantic capacitor there. I wonder if they had designed this originally to use a super cap rather than a battery. So, let's, uh, let's see if we can't get that RF can off. Lucky, I won't actually damage anything under here. But me and my big clumsy paws, not likely that I'll be able to get out of here without damaging anything under here. Looks like there's some pretty sensitive RF components under this here. That just popped right off there. That wasn't too bad. It wasn't nearly as bad as I was expecting. All right, what do we have? We have a 10.949 megahertz oscillator and two RF filters. Very nice, large RF filters here. Given the relative low power that the GPS satellites transmit at, these are probably some pretty deep and narrow bandpass filters to keep other RF fields from interfering with the reception, especially in high noise environments like urban centers and such. We got lots of passive components on the back. 
capacitors and uh, inductors looks like uh, yeah two inductors there surface mount inductors well, let's look see what this is 5201 33BM I can't find any information on that particular chip there. Uh, again, as usual, if you know of any information, let me know. Some beefy diodes, beefy surface mount diodes there. Wow. So, following the traces here, uh, we come into the filter right below where it's uh, marked FL1 there. Uh, our signal comes in right there and then it comes out of the filter here goes through this cap which is to protect the receiver and then into this Rockwell International uh, system on chip basically uh, I can't find any information on this chip but I'd be willing to bet that it is a purpose built device that does nothing but GPS reception and decoding uh, all on one chip and then uh, we've got uh, some prom over here and then a uh, main microcontroller that probably interfaces everything together and interfaces with your uh, computer via RS-232 Don't mind my scanner. There's a uh, structure fire going on nearby. I'm just trying to keep my ear on it. Uh, got a fair number of unpopulated uh, component spots on here. Um, like there's another, there's a spot for what looks like might be another crystal, since the crystals are marked uh, with a Y. Uh, this one being Y1, this one being Y2, Y3 is unpopulated down here. There's room for a gigantic capacitor here. Uh, got some more surface mount uh, semiconductors. Looks like maybe regulation, maybe regular old transistors. Uh, as we said before, we've got you know a, uh, uh, two proms. Uh, probably this is a smaller bootstrap prom and then this Amtel chip here uh, is the main memory f or the main uh, firmware for the system and then two fairly fast access 70 nanosecond access uh, dynamic RAM chips and that's all there is to the main board on this thing. There's not much there. It's a fairly simple design. Two chips. Uh, newer GPS's. Uh, I'll have one to tear down in... Uh, actually, probably tomorrow. The replacement for it is coming, since the one I have isn't doesn't have drivers for 64-bit uh, Win 7. Uh, I decided to buy uh, a newer one that has a faster refresh rate too so uh, we'll take it apart at some point and just to compare to this I did pull the GPS antenna out of the case uh, there's not much to see on it the entire thing is actually uh, very well shielded and I don't feel like trying to get in here and desolder all of this all we're going to find in here is uh, some passive components, some filtering, possibly a LNA, low noise amplifier. Uh, on the back side of this uh, is the uh, simple patch antenna on a, uh, on a ceramic wafer. Uh, they're very simple devices, not much to them. This probably receives DC power over the antenna cable uh, and then decouples that from the AC RF signal that it sends back to the receiver. 
and that's all she wrote. So I was puzzling over this squiggly trace versus this thicker direct trace down here to the filter, and it just occurred to me the GPS antenna requires power for its amplifiers and what have you. Uh, normally power like that is sent up the antenna cable so that you aren't running multiple wires up to the antenna. Keeps things a little simpler, especially if you want to use an external antenna. And it occurs to me that that's probably what this trace is. This is probably the DC power going up to the antenna connector. The cap there would decouple the AC signal from feeding back into the uh, power system on here. The reason the trace is squiggly like that is so that it is not a uh, resonant length at the frequencies this is operating at, so it doesn't become an antenna and start broadcasting inside this RF shielding can and interfering with the rest of the system. Not much to it. It's a simple device. Newer ones are a lot smaller. I mean, every smartphone on the planet has one. Uh, integrated into its radio pack so everything that's here has been shrunk down to a single chip solution that's probably not much bigger than one of these single proms now so technology keeps moving forward so there you have a 1998 vintage GPS Thanks for watching. As always, uh, click the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. If I talk too much, let me know. If you know more about something that I don't, please put it in the comments. We're all here to learn. Thanks and have a great day. Uh, <laughs> <Whee>! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>